And we're live. There here we go. are. Welcome, everybody. Rob Good here from evening. No BS Photo Success. How you doing? So uh, we've got uh, special guests with us. But before we get into that, just a quick announcement. I want to tell you how I met this dude. So, uh, hey, John, who do we have on last week? I forgot. Was it Chad Pennington? Yes. So last week from uh, yeah. New, New, New York. Just want to let everybody know that replay is in the uh, Facebook group. Uh, as well as every other photo buzz, as well as uh, replays that I've been posting literally every day of some high quality information. And uh, today, our guest is all the way from Leeds, UK. Now, I got to explain to you guys something uh, before we get into it. I discovered uh, Charles, I don't know, 12, 13, 14 years ago because of his website. His website is, I know, John, you were asking earlier, uh -huh. and I cut you off there, but there's, no uh, it's called artsphotography.co.uk artsphotography.co.uk yeah. and the, the reason it captivated me and the reason I contacted Charles and he graciously this is the third time we've had you on I believe right Charles I think so yeah Two, second or third yeah this is this is minimum minimum the third one possibly the fourth now I was excited to that you know you got on board with these uh, presentations from the get-go and the reason uh, I was trying to explain was your website was one of the best websites <laughs> on photography and uh, to do with marketing that I had ever seen. And I remember way back in the day, I don't know, how long have you been in the game now uh, running your full-time professional photography business? Do I have to say? <laughs> <laughs> Roughly speaking. 96, 96 25 oh, years. Nice. So, well, when I saw you, it was the early 2000s and, or somewhere around there, and I, and, and I just – really liked what you were doing with your marketing, your marketing message and the way you designed your website because yeah. you were really onto a lot of stuff that I consider to be uh, very, very relevant as far as running and marketing a professional photography studio is concerned. Now, I'm sure you've gone through changes over the years and uh, that's what I want to talk to you about today. So if you're all at all interested, folks, go to his website and uh, check out artsphotography.co.uk and you'll get a sense of what I'm talking about. Lots of information, lots of high quality lead generation tools, as well as your alternate website, which I believe is yours, called portraitsinthepark.co.uk, which I'd, I'd love you to explain what that's all about in a minute. But first of all, Charles, thank you for joining us. And uh, can you give us an update about as to what's going on in your life these days as we yeah. speak in late june 2021 or well can uh, i first um say how how much admiration i've got for the fact that you've turned into a professional broadcaster since uh <laughs> since we last spoke you've got the headphones and you've got yeah. the radio voice and it's um you know you've gone full circle check it out i got two mics <laughs> whoa ah, <laughs> it's, uh, i just bought one uh, real cheap somebody was selling it yeah, I've, do you know what? Life's been good, actually. I've, I've gone through a lot of change over the past few years. And um, I'm not really running a studio anymore. I kind of left that behind in about 2012, really. when I had, Well, I ran it till about 2015, but I kind of um, ran it down. I didn't want to do as much of the studio work as, as, I, as I had been doing before when I had my first son, Samuel, who's now eight. Mm -hmm. So I've got two boys, one's almost nine, Sam, and I've got another one, Zach, who's five. And I, I so Portraits in the Park is my studio um, kind of passion, really, that I've put into outdoor photography. Um, and the, the main thing that we're doing now is school photography, which, so our website has changed from the studio work that we were doing before mm -hmm. to um, now that the school photography, which is now makes up the main part of our business. Nice. How do I get, oh, there we are. I can see you, but all now you disappeared for a moment. That's just me. I'm, I just put you full frame there for a second. Oh. <laughs> we're focusing oh. on you. So life's good and I've gone through lots of change and you know the website we've just had redone to the school photography website as you can see and we, we, you know I'm, I've become less um, shiny object syndrome <laughs> and I've become better um, especially right now I'm working with a really good business coach I've become better at going really just aiming and focusing on one market 
uh, which for me right now is the schools. And uh, with children, I didn't want to work particularly weekends, every weekend. Mm -hmm. um, although I still love the studio stuff and the concept of it and working with people. My goal is now to get to 100 schools uh, and 100 nurseries, and we're kind of about halfway there. Nice. Uh, just taken on a new sales lady that started, she actually started two weeks ago, but she had a real bad reaction to the second COVID jab. So she needed a couple of weeks to, to get around that and just, right. just with us again this week. And uh, we're on our way, you know, we're on our way. And, and uh, COVID got in the way and scuppered those plans. Um, but because uh, schools were shut over here for eight months of, of the last 18. So about half of the time the schools have been closed, which has made life really difficult from that uh, perspective. Um, but yeah, we've gone into loads of different areas and uh, within the school right. market so much that we're now offering the schools. It's really, ex it's an exciting time. So you guys are open right now? Yeah, yeah, okay. we're good. Yeah, we've we been are. locked down six going on seven months now in schools. I don't know, are they going back, John? Um, no, they're not going back till probably September now. If at all. <laughs> yeah, well, I think by September they will, but. Pardon? You I think they still yeah. locked down. Yeah, we're still locked down. Oh, yeah. um, it's crazy. So, um, we're hoping for the better. So, yeah, I find that interesting. Okay, I, I kind of know this about you, but for the benefit of those who are listening or watching the replay, uh, how long have you been into focusing on schools? Has it been the last five years, four years, three years? I've always done the schools, really, mm -hmm. since 90, well, 97, 98, when we, had, we started growing our nursery database. And we had an account of around 200 nurseries. Uh, wow you know, private day nurseries, but they're really small by comparison to the schools that we do. So mm -hmm. we kind of let those, thank you, Raquel, sorry, I'm just some stuff here. We let those fizzle out and um, we kind of, we, we've been building the schools alongside the studio stuff, but, you know, I think you can be a, a jack of all trades and master of none. And mm -hmm. when we were running the studio, uh, you know, the school photography was just running alongside it, but it was never the main event kind of thing. All right. The studio was the main event. And then since really I shut the studio in 2012, um, I guess it's been the last five, six years seriously growing that, that side of the business. Cool. Now, I'm going to dig into this a little bit more. Was it out of necessity and or opportunity and flowing with the changes? Uh, I've noticed that uh, families are not as popular as they used to be. They've waned as well as weddings. Uh, we've, ad we've changed and adopted in our studio to go with those times. Is, is that kind of the reasoning behind why you sort of decided to focus into schools? You saw a bigger opportunity or did it just kind yeah. of grow organically and you thought, well, this is where we're going. This is where we're going. I think, yeah, I think part of it was just the, um, the commercial decision of, you know, I did enjoy the studio stuff, but it, it, like anything does get repetitive after a time. And, you know, the lead generational aspect, when we first started running the studio, you know, we were in shopping centers and that was the way to do lead generation. And we needed a telesales team and a, an exhibition team. And it was expensive to generate leads. And then we jumped on the group on bandwagon in like 2011, 2012. And we were one of the first companies to run a family portrait deal with Groupon back in, I think, 2012. And right. We sold something like 600 vouchers. And I think of those, about 500 people came into the studio, which, which fed the studio for an entire year. Uh -huh. uh, and the average spend was something like 500 quid. So it was like a quarter of a million pounds worth of business. That's pretty that, good. That, you know, that, that fed the studio. And then everybody jumped on the bandwagon. And then, okay. you know, everybody was doing the, the voucher thing. And, you know, it got too done too quickly. And uh, I just think I kind of ran out. I just got fed up with, you know, standing at the door, waiting to see if people were going to actually turn up or not. And okay. then the whole viewing process of wanting to see if they're actually going to spend any additional money or not. And I loved it. And I was still passionate about it at the end. But I think the schools for me was, it was more of a, an easier Monday to Friday um, scalable business model. Um, one that we could, you know, more easily predict. Uh -huh. And that needed less kind of marketing money throwing at it, although, you know, winning schools is not by no means easy. Um, no way. I just saw it as a, as a more um, scalable opportunity. And, and I think I kind of outgrew in my own head the yeah. studio model, even though now we do, like downstairs we, we do have a small studio. And we do, 
I continue doing things like headshots and a bit of commercial okay. um, product photography, which we do. So you scale back your expenses by getting rid of the, the, the big expensive spacious studio, no doubt? I did. Yeah, we got rid of that in 2014, so seven years ago. Yeah, you just adapted and went with the times. That sounds like it makes a lot of sense to me. And, uh, you know, uh, you, you hear oftentimes photographers talking about doing the things they're passionate about and what have you. I think you're passionate about feeding your family and making some money and keeping the business profitable. It sounds uh, like, yeah, in a sense, that's a pro uh, it's priority. Not, it's, not, it's, not, it's not the only, uh, it's not certainly not my main driver. I mean, I, I love photography still, and I, it's, it's yeah. an honor to be still involved in such a brilliant industry. Yeah. Um, to give you a flavor of what I'm doing tomorrow, for example, so I'm, I'm shooting tomorrow, I'm going to a, a school. It's the fourth time they've invited us back in the last two weeks. So it's a big international boarding school here in the UK mm -hmm. called Queen Ethel Burgers. So we're going back there tomorrow to do commercial branding for the school. Nice. Uh, like prospectus style photography okay. and then in the afternoon i'm going over to a place called sheffield and we're doing some uh, levers portraits for a massive 1500 place school which we're trying to um get in with to do their individual portraits but they've got a levers ceremony for two hours so it's a yeah. full day shooting tomorrow and I'm, I'm excited i'm juiced i can't wait i love all that side of the business and yeah it, it's even less about the money as it is more about impact and yeah uh, and, and legacy for me now those are the, the kind of you know, important things to me and that the money's, you know, a byproduct of all that, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, either way, it sounds like it's working out for you. So you said your goal was to get 100 schools, you're halfway there? Yeah, approximately. That sounds like progress to me. <laughs> it's, we're getting there. We're getting there. It's, you know, it's all a learning curve. And, um, you know, winnings, what I've learned in my career and in, in my business life is that, you know, relationships should all begin by giving first and you know we're just doing things for schools where we're just trying to add as much value as possible so it all feels very non-transactional mm -hmm. and um so a part of the business that we're building up right now is um visual marketing services for the school so like for example tomorrow we're doing this commercial branding where we'll go around the school and capture um commercial shots of their classrooms their sports facilities the teachers whatever they need we capture those images are you are are you doing those pro bono and and or just to help them out or is is that a, a source um, of income for you? It depends. Sometimes we offer it. So we have this voucher here. Um, so it's called Your School Story Golden Ticket. Mm -hmm. So it's fourteen hundred and eighty five pound value. So we will sometimes if the if it's um, it. you know if it's a good enough school to get, we'll give that away for free. Where, where I got to ask you, where did you come up with that idea? uh god knows my creative mind i guess yeah <laughs> i love it it's uh the very dan kennedy by the way who, yeah well uh, i do how is he by the way do you know how he is Is he? he's is back he... you know he was is on he? he was on his deathbed two years ago and he uh they put him into uh where's the place you go before you go to the graveyard uh, well, it's not the mortuary. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, you're you're sick and you're gonna die. Oh, uh, a hostel. A, ho a host hospice, a hospice. Hospice. Yeah. Hostel. Hospice. Hospice. <laughs> he went to a hostel. Yeah, yeah hus hospice. He was in hospice. He was supposed to die, and he wrote his last letter, and he made a full recovery, and really? uh, wow. he's back writing newsletters. So uh, it's amazing. So go figure. Well, well, well it's interesting because I I work with two guys here in the UK, and you asked me where I get my ideas from. This is probably partly the answer. Um, there's a guy in the UK called Nigel Botterill. How do you spell that last name? B O T T E R I L L. Nigel. And he started nine multi million pound businesses from scratch. Right. And his latest and biggest success is his uh, online coaching program, which is called the Entrepreneur's Circle. Mm -hmm. He's great. But what's interesting is he bought the master franchise license from Dan Kennedy. Oh, did he? Yeah. So, okay. There's a connection here. So is he your coach? He's not directly my personal business coach, but I'm part of the entrepreneur circle. So he right. does things like um, clinics on the morning where there's like 80, 90 people on a Zoom call and you can ask him questions. Right. Uh, there's an entrepreneur circle vault where you get access to all right. of his latest information. Uh, things like Google AdWords, Facebook marketing, uh, writing ad copy, all of that kind of stuff. So then, he, he's definitely an influence. 
Very much so. Very so, much. so, and he's big time, obviously, if he's bought the license to Dan Kennedy, uh, there's a connection there between what you're doing and your marketing and the Dan Kennedy universe. Is Definitely. that, a, is that yeah. a fair assessment? I think those are those are dots that you can safely join up, yeah. Cool. I, I sort of interrupted and, and, and cut you off there, but I, I think that that's an important point to make. Dan Kennedy's always been my number one favorite of all the marketing people. I highly recommend anybody who's interested in business or uh, growing a business, uh, buy all his books. Well, and, yeah, and the thing that, the, the nugget that I would take away from all of Dan Kennedy's stuff is that he says, if you know, if you want to be successful in anything you do, you've got to stop being a doer of that thing and become a marketer of that thing. And that means that for photographers, I'm afraid to say, but we have to put our cameras down. If, you know, you're driven by money and success and, you know, a scaled business that produces significant results, you know, you're not going to do that probably mm -hmm. by running around with a camera in your hand. Very true. And, and you know, it's, it's probably what I saw in your culture and part of your brand uh, a big part of your brand when I first uh, encountered your website years and years and years ago is a lot of that influence, that direct marketing and that, that savvy marketing, which seemed to be so focused and so, uh, uh, I don't want to say specific, but it, it was it's, it's marketing, which I think resonates with people and is uh, very, very relevant. And, and case in point, you just showed us an example. Can we see that one more time? The pouch, yeah, there we go. That so. goes to the school? Is that a cold call thing or do they respond to some oh, sort gosh. of a... Well, this is another thing now. We're going much deeper into documented sales processes now. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so just to rewind, sorry, Rob, talking That's fine. about Dan Kennedy and um, uh, Nigel runs um three or four large national events every year uh because of covid he's had to run them virtually yeah uh, but one of the last ones he did last year was called ad astra to the stars and back and he works very closely with a guy another guy called martin norbury n-o-r-b-u-r-y mm -hmm. and he's written a book recently called i don't work fridays and martin did this training on scaling your business and actually what it really takes to scale a business and I just loved all all of his information so I contacted Martin and he is now my business coach so um, Nigel Botterill's entrepreneur circle is more of an online membership where you can okay. tap in and out of information and Martin is my um, business coach and he works actually very closely with Frank Kern so there's yes. some more, more dots for you to join up there as well Frank Kern I believe is a student of Dan Kennedy yeah so and martin's been i mean he's one of those guys who he doesn't need to say a lot and i have i've spent maybe a handful of hours with him over the past four or five months working with him but everything he's said and done has made a huge shift in my thinking mm -hmm. and my understanding of how i'm going to get from where i am now to where i want to get to that's amazing um this leads me to a big question i want to ask you you seem to value coaching, mm -hmm. um, obviously. Uh, I'm going to assume that you've gotten a lot over the years, the decades, by hiring coaches, and I'm going to assume the coaching situation you got with Martin is probably costing you a few dollars. Uh, don't need to know what it is, but it's probably a, a fair investment that would a lot of people would probably shy away from. Mm -hmm. And making all those assumptions is it safe to assume every single penny is money or uh whatever the currency you use in the uk <laughs> do you guys use pennies <laughs> and we do but I, wish, I, wish, I wish my business coach you know was pennies but he's pounds unfortunately yeah well every every single pound is a pound well spent is what i'm getting at so uh you know i'm just making that point for those who are struggling with marketing i think that this is probably one of the smartest things that a person can do is, is get onto a coaching situation uh, yeah, like you've I done i would agree and i think there is a caveat to that as well that 
you know, people just show up. It's like the people that read they buy books just make they feel cleverer just by having them, but they don't actually read them. And I think the same thing applies to coaching. You know, you have to you have to be willing to change and you have to be willing to implement the knowledge that people are giving you. Mm-hmm. And trust mm-hmm. in that knowledge, otherwise it's utterly pointless. Mm-hmm. Um, with Martin, he he has sold out twice for very significant amounts on both occasions. And he's won business coach of the year. So he's got his stripes and he's, you know, worn the T-shirt and been there. Uh-huh. You, I, I know that he's not in it for the money, although he's still currently very successful. He just wants to help business owners reach their goals. Yeah. And what's interesting for me about that is that he, he talks about business on your terms. So like when I get to my 100 schools and 50 nurseries, those are my terms. And terms is an acronym for time, energy, resources, money, and sanity. I love it. And what happens, he says, is that a lot of business owners get to where they think they want it to be, but they don't stop there. They keep going. And when they go beyond that point, they've sabotaged their initial dream, which is a really interesting point. And I... Mm-hmm. Yeah. What do you I'm, suppose that is? You know... I just want to try and stick with what, but but we grow, you see, because we're not the same person when we get to where we thought we wanted to be. It's like a mirage, I guess. The the water disappears. Pretty deep analogies, and uh, so it's almost like I, I've always felt this to be true, and that is that your business is a reflection of who you are and where you're at. And uh, if if you uh, start with the owner, you'll fix the owner, fix the business, sort of thing. Does that sort of tie in with what you just said? Yeah, a million percent. I think I think everything. I think a business is a complete reflection of your uh, goals, your mindset, your behavior. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, it, it's all thought, isn't it? Thoughts mm-hmm. equals actions equals results, and it's my business. They're my thoughts. They're my actions. They're my results. <laughs> so mm-hmm. you can't possibly get away from that. It's they're in inextricably linked. You know. Um, you can't blame it on anybody else. And that's one of the heaven and hells of being in business. You know, it's all on your shoulders. Mm-hmm. So Martin, your personal coach, um, is he start you on to identifying specific goals? Is that a big part of his strategy with you? Goals based? No, not, 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 not initially. Um, the first thing for me was about alignment. So um, I mentioned the term shiny object syndrome earlier on (laughs) in the call. And when the schools were closed through like March of 2020, right through to November, and then they opened again, and then they closed again, my creative brain was kind of running running overtime, thinking of different ideas and projects. And I had about eight different things on the go. I mean, some ridiculous things. Yeah. One of which, for example, was... I got my drone license a few about last year. Okay. And one of them was a company called Home Above, an idea that I'd had to go out and fly drones and take aerial photography that used to be shot with aeroplanes but with a drone. Uh huh. And then put, you could put them online using Shootproof or a platform like that. I'm giving away all my good ideas here, but somebody might use it. You never know. Uh, and so it was the modern equivalent of aerial photography shot with drones, and people and you'd advertise it through Facebook, and people could order a drone shoot at the house or farmyard or whatever it may be. Nice. But I had like eight ideas like this, and I, they were all good. But you can't possibly, you know, spin all the wheels all the time. So, so the first thing back to the question was Martin was really all about alignment, and we looked okay. at the business plan. That's some of my drone stuff there, yeah. And uh, he just said, "Look, you know, um, I'd always known that schools was likely the model that I was going to grow and scale." And he just uh-huh. his response to it, look, he said, "Look, there's there's." Unlimited amounts of schools. I mean, there's 29,000 schools in not the immediate area, but within a, a sort of 70, 80 mile radius of, of, of where I am in Leeds. Wow. Uh, there's, you know, there's plenty of photographers and there's plenty of kit. So there's nothing stopping that business being scaled. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it was all about alignment and getting me to see that, you know, I could show you something on my wall now, but I'm not going to move my webcam. But basically, it's it's a visual, uh, it's a visual board of everything that I want, sort of externally to achieve in my life. 
Uh-huh. One of those things being a chalet in the Alps, because I have a, a huge love of the mountains and I love skiing in, in the winter and I love the, the summertime in, in the mountains in the Alps and Europe as well. Nice. And I play golf and I know what kind of things I want, what holidays I want to take my family on. And all of those things basically have a cost. And uh, this this is kind of back to Nigel Potterill's um, training where you cost out your life. You know, you design your life, you mm-hmm. cost it, and then you reverse engineer your business so that you know what numbers you need to do to get to the turnover, to get to the net profit to afford that life. Mm-hmm. So that- I'd, al- I'd already done that when I started working with Martin, but then it was more about an alignment piece. Okay. Saying, look, these are your numbers in the school. If you want to achieve that, this is what you're going to have to do. And so that's that's it. It's all become very mm-hmm. focused. Okay. I was just going to say that's where the term alignment comes in that you mentioned a few times. And uh, uh, it sounds to me like creating that vision, and uh, obviously you've got a vision board, but it sounds to me like it's largely uh, goals-based with a very specific, clear, laid-out vision. Uh, I like the idea that you reverse engineer it, mm-hmm. which makes a lot of sense, Yeah. Which, which will bring you down. I'm assuming that'll bring you back to, okay, what do I need to do today and this month? to uh, start moving towards these goals. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. What's interesting though is that recently we've been adding lots more bought-in services for the schools to buy. So an example of that is last week, um, we did a graduation ceremony for a school of year 11 leavers. Mm-hmm. So we'd already sold in photography that the school bought from us and we went and we shot a three hour ceremony and we delivered all the files via shoot proof. Um, but then we also set up a studio on site and then we get this hat throwing shot, which I'd love to show you. I don't know if I can share the screen, but maybe in a few minutes I'll do that. Can, um, can you show the screen? Take... Yeah, can. Uh... Does he have that capability, John? I don't know if he does on his side or not. I can. I've got a share button here. Oh, okay, cool. you can try it. It usually works better if you're on Chrome. Yeah, I'm on Chrome. And then you would hit share and then go to the Chrome tab. Okay, bear with me one second. I'll just see if I can find Once you it. got it open, of course. Yeah. Uh, share screen. There we go. It'll show up on my side, yeah, and then I'll be able to bring it in. Okay. So can right you now, s- I'm s- I see us. Okay, you will do because yeah. So there we go. Now I see it. So, for example, so we did this school. So these are all the getting ready images. Oh, sorry, this is the ceremony actually. So the girl came up and sang. And then there was an award. So there was like 150 kids getting scrolled. So we took shots of them getting on and off the stage. Mm-hmm. Um, that was one part of it. And then um, this was the other part of it, which is all the getting ready uh, side of it. So they were all gowning up, getting in their gowns. I mean, they're just young kids. So mm-hmm. this is this is kind of like a growing niche here in, in the UK, as proms were at the start. Right. Um, graduation ceremonies for schools. I mean, they they filter down into nursery schools, you know. If you, if uh-huh. you go like that. Uh-huh. So we did those, and then this is really cool. They tradition. The last five years we've done this. They go out there and they throw their hats. Oh, there That's we go. Cool. That is fun. Uh, so we we grab that, and then um, there's some other ones as well here. These are, that'd be a nice blow up to put up in the school itself. Yeah, they will probably. I think they do actually. I think yeah, they're putting it on a banner outside. This oh, is, sweet. This is high school, right? Grade yeah, twelve. This okay. is a secondary. Yeah. So Getty images were there from the press, and they wanted a load of other shots. So we got a few variations. So when you put them on shoot proof, are you s- mm-hmm. making sales online via the gallery to the yeah. parents and that? I'll, I'll share that with you in one set. I'll tell okay. you how we've, we've we've done phenomenally from this particular shoot. Uh, then we have a studio set up in one of the classrooms. So we had a gray background and a white background and just invested in some new Elinchrom 500 HD lights, which are fantastic. Nice. So the quality is really, really nice on these. So there's 389 files there. I won't go through all of them for you. And so, so that's what we do. So yeah, we put them on shoot proof. Nice. And um, that gallery's done just over two thousand dollars. That's pretty good. How do I stop share here? Is it stop screen? I think it is, isn't it? Yeah. 
I think it stopped already. There you go. So. It's gone now. There we go. So, 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 so we did the photography. We did the studio. We did the hat throwing. We've got the sale from the school, but then we've also got the sale from the parents buying the files. But then we started to slowly encroach into the video world. And one of our freelancers uh, has done quite a few live streams. Now, because the parents couldn't attend the ceremony, uh -huh. uh, we suggested to the, well, it was actually Martin Norbury, it was my coach. He, he actually suggested, why don't you offer live streaming to the school? So we did. And initially they said no, because they thought that it wouldn't be safe and the parents would be able to get access and without a password, but we've made it, we made it safe. And two nights before they said, right, can we have live stream as well? So we did our first live stream event through our website. So parents could watch it live without being mm -hmm. amazing. Did, did you use zoom? Uh, no, we didn't. We, we, I had actually a professional videographer in the end come in cause my freelancer let me down, which was actually a good job cause he had all the kit uh -huh. and, uh, he had two cameras and he was able to switch between different angles Nice. and he was running it through YouTube. But then okay. he had an issue with the school's firewall, so we had to run it through another thing, which then ran through our website. So it, it just uh -huh. it worked really well, and they actually paid more for that than they did for the photography. In the oh, end. really? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. so this is amazing, and you've adapted with the uh, situation that we're all in, and this could uh, evolve into um, a project that's going to be around for a long time, potentially. Definitely. Definitely, I think you know this is what happens when you focus. It's like things grow around a central core rather than chasing loads of separate chickens around. Mm -hmm. And it, <laughs> it, 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 it's not, it, I think you learn that actually, I think one of the reasons why people do so many things and the shiny object syndrome disease is because you know, you never think it's possible to grow. I don't even think it's boredom. I just think that people have a lack of belief that they can just do one thing really, really well. Right. And it's ironic is actually when you focus on one thing, you get to do loads of things within that one thing. It just happens to be around one core. Mm -hmm. That's pretty amazing. Um, so like another thing that we're adding into the schools is virtual tours. Now we're just about to invest in a virtual tour machine. So that's really popular. So schools can run virtual open days. Um, and you know, it, it, it's all about how many different services we can upsell into the school ultimately, or, yeah. use them as a free tool to get into the into the school um you mentioned free tool to get into the school i want to go back to that um i just uh for clarity's sake the schools you're dealing with are they public funded schools or are they mostly or all private schools um a mixture to be fair a mixture um we have some private schools we have some smallish primaries we've got some large primaries we've got some medium-sized secondaries and we've got some big secondary schools of like 1800 2000 kids big um so they're they're hard to handle but um a lot of work lucrative if if you do them properly so the reason i asked that question uh is because the um I, i'm curious about the nature of the administrate at the administrative level of these schools now do they feel compelled that they would sort of want to and they would be attracted to say a virtual uh tour of their school if they're publicly funded maybe they just well we don't have to market we're publicly funded versus a private school which is more motivated so is that a thing over there or at all or am i just making stuff up say because we we haven't sold in that many services to non-private okay. schools but it does feel that the private schools have got more marketing funds to throw at things uh, than, you know, the, but then again, it depends how well funded the non-private schools are because some mm -hmm. of them have got huge budgets and they haven't, they haven't spent it. And so it's about delivering the right products at the right time um, yeah. at the right price. And if, if they need it and they want it, they'll buy it. It's, it's it's kind of amazing how you've you've gone into this field and and then you're reaching out the tentacles into different services and uh, addressing different needs whether they even know they have these needs or not uh, they become legitimate needs as long as they realize hey we want that and we're willing to uh, pay you yeah. for them uh, you said y you use them sometimes potentially as a free tool to get into the school um, is that that goes back to that coupon which I'm totally smitten by by the way. <laughs> 
You love the coupon. You love, love the, the envelope that comes in yet. Yeah. The uh, I love the coupon. That's the uh, the wallet it comes in. Uh huh. And there's some testimonials in there. Do you just mass mail those out to all the schools? Uh, we haven't mass mailed them. We've kind of bespoke mailed them to the people. That that sits in there. And then nice. there's all these loose, um, you know, uh, two ten by two ten inserts for all the different services we wow. offer. So for schools, there's about eight, I think. Beautiful That's branding. It really looks very, very good. Thank you. Appreciate that a lot. So you I think it done. proves that tangible stuff still works. It's not always just online marketing. Tangible stuff in the hands still work. Yeah, and I think you've got to be kind of careful not to throw, you know, stupid amounts of money at shiny brochures because it, you know, it's easy to to think that it's going to be the magic pill, and it's mm -hmm. it isn't. It's just an addition to the marketing. Um, yeah you know the marketing pillars really well that's the shiny object syndrome taking over your marketing <laughs> yeah probably <laughs> probably but i think yeah it's good to have a brochure we've got it in pdf form as well so we send that by email and you know yeah. sorry that that stuff that you showed us looks pretty high quality and it's probably the same there as it is in north america here uh full color printing has dropped quite a bit do you use a vista print type place or a local printer and get great prices that we, we do um, in Vistaprint? Uh, yeah, kind of. We, 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 I use a place here called, um, what's it called? Uh, I can't remember the name of it. It's in Brighton. Um, it's an online print service. You upload yeah. the stuff, you choose the paper quality, yeah. you get it back next day or in a few days if you want free delivery. Uh -huh. And uh, it's really good that it's high quality. I think for stuff more bespoke, stuff like, you know, these um, brochures with the lips and stuff at the bottom. Yeah. Uh, I go through my graphic designer who's got his own print house for those. Okay. Um, but Money yeah. well spent. Well, yeah, if you get the return. Yeah. Return. But yeah, I think it's important to have nice. I mean, that was all. This is all fairly recent, Rob. You know, all this stuff was done sort of maybe January, February 2020. But because the world's been on hold yeah. for the last 18 months and we haven't really had that much opportunity to put it into full circulation. It's all very recent and all the visual marketing stuff that we've, we're kind of, you know, growing and adding to, uh, because we see, you know, a gap in the market and a need for the schools to have those things is all, it's all a work in progress as well. Yeah, that's very nice. Very well done. Thank uh, you very much. Uh, I'm impressed. And I have like 18 other questions flowing into like, <laughs> like fireworks in my brain. Fire away, fire away. <laughs> he, he's like a kid in a candy store when you start talking uh, marketing. Yeah, I love that yeah, stuff. Well, yeah, yeah. I do something similar with uh, our, our um, fairy portraits. We have an eight-page full-color, uh, like a magazine. And uh, we've just created one for our wedding services. We're doing pop-up weddings now, so I created a similar product. And, you know, you give that to a client, and which is what you're doing. You're presenting that to a client or a prospective client. That goes in their hands. And, and I mean, it's it, alone. You don't even have to say anything else. It just They look at it, and obviously you're using some savvy marketing copywriting. You're using headlines, and you have an offer. And you're really coming across as uh, somebody who stands for a uh, certain level of uh, I don't want to say just quality, but quality and service that you're addressing specifically in that, that niche. Yeah. And uh, it's like a stepping stone, and it's just something I really, really value. So I'm always impressed when I see that kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, I over the years, decades, people would sometimes ask me, well, what's, what's the secret, Rob? And I'm like, just do it, man. <laughs> It's just true. do what the rest are not willing to do. And Absolutely. I look at that. Yeah, you know? that helps. It does help. It does help. Another thing that we've done, you know, through through the pandemic, we had time not on our hands, but we had time that we would not normally have had on our hands to to implement new technologies. And um, a real backbone for school photography is the platforms and systems that we use. And we've integrated a system called NetLife, which is I don't know if you guys have heard of it. It's a Norwegian. No. Norwegian school photography system and it's absolutely phenomenal and um, they've, they've spent millions on on the R&D with this platform and what this has allowed us to do is is um, allow the parents to pre-register for the shoot before uh, before the photo day right and um, they get 
an, uh, a digital notification by the method they choose, so SMS or email, and um, to let them know their images are ready. So that means that there's no physical proofs that need to go back to the school. Yeah. Which was particularly relevant just post COVID. Um, and it also means the school have got no admin to do because there's no packs to hand out. And we have tied up with a photographer who are also using that life down south in the UK near London called Carmel Jane. Um, C R C A R M E L Jane. She's a she's another school photographer who's done well. She scaled her business really well, and uh, she does all our printing for us. So when the parent orders, the the order gets sent off to Carmel Jane. She does the fulfilment, and it's next day free home delivery. So the school don't wow. don't have anything to hand out. So we've made it zero admin for the school, which is brilliant. Yeah. That's important, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So NetLife, I, I think we have something like that in uh, both the U.S. and Canada. Mm -hmm. uh, John, have you heard of any, like I seen through the labs, yeah. our big yeah. lab up in Winnipeg, I think they offer a school service, which is probably sort of similar. Yeah, I uh, think the one in Edmonton that I use uses a two, Technicare. I think they Technicare, use Technicare, that's what I'm thinking about. Yeah, Ed, they have Ed, software too, like Flow software, and then they have like a Pixel something that you can use through the school stuff in that. Yeah, yeah. That's what I heard. I don't do school photography. Yeah. So I'm not I'm not in that loop. However, I like the idea that there's services out there available, and you're you're maximizing your use of them through your photography studio business. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, I only one. do the uh, grad photos, and I do um, what sports, but I don't do the whole school. So okay, just a, just an analogy I'll share with you is quite an interesting one. Uh, I asked Martin, my coach, a couple of weeks ago on a call. You know, we, we're starting to get all these different services now both in terms of the school photography we offer and uh, the visual marketing. And I said, you know, how do we know what to sell when? And he said, have I told you about the crossword puzzle? And I said, no. I said, what's that? He said, well, imagine all these services like a crossword puzzle. Mm -hmm. You know, you get your core one in like 12 down and then you just fill in all the others whenever you can. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, Martin's teaching is all about uh, micro commitments in terms of getting the schools on board. And that goes back to the Frank Kern stuff. Yep. about just bringing them onto your radar, building a relationship, getting to know them well, sending them some information, potentially getting them on a Zoom call for a demo, and then they buy a small thing or they have a test shoot with you, and then you ascend them into more of a, a longer-term client with more bought-in services and just you know increase the average order value of each school. Sounds like a marketing funnel, lead generation, pretty much with, with Ascension yeah. Marketing in, in yeah, place. I think all businesses like that, isn't it? You know, all, uh, for the all, most part, yeah. You know, like yeah. even with the fairy stuff that we we both run in the, you know, that we do is like you know, in the past, I well, I've never done a free shoot with that, but a low value shoot in order to get a free print, and that's all micro commitment stuff, you know. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's true. That's amazing. So, so you're. Uh, can we talk about? We've only got a few minutes left with you, so I'm going to let you go soon. But can we talk a little bit about Portraits in the Park? Is that working out for you, yeah. or is that something that's uh, it relevant? Is, it is working out. Um, that was <laughs> that was kind of like me not wanting to let go of my passion for studio photography mm -hmm. uh, and really enjoying doing outdoor um, you know, shoots in the park. And we did two or three days with it um, last year and it worked extremely well. I just I literally haven't had time to do anything with it. And I'm actually looking at my diary here because I'm supposed to be doing a shoot on the 23rd of July and I need to pull my finger out my ass and get some marketing done on that front, <laughs> you know, because uh, we've got a month. So it's working well. It is. It's a really nice concept. Can I bring, can I share this again? You and, sure um, can. Just uh, bear with me one second and I'll bring up the site and talk you through some stuff on there. Um, Once I see it on my side, I can bring it in. Yeah, I've got it here. I'm looking at your team. You've got six people, you and five other people working with you. Uh, all ladies. There's uh, Louise, Rebecca, Michelle, yeah, yeah, Tessa, yeah. and Allison, and you're the only dude. You know, Charles, you're looking good, man. You never, <laughs> you never age. What's with Don't that? Be silly. Don't be silly. I've got, I've got far less hair than I used to. Uh, I know the feeling. <laughs> <laughs> what, are you, what are you talking about? Me too. I didn't, I didn't know you. I've only met you for the first time, John. <laughs> John was born without hair. He's been that way his whole life. 
So, oh, bless him. So I, I could talk a lot. Can you see that up on the screen? Yeah, we can see it, yeah. I, I could talk a lot about this, um, either from a marketing perspective or a photography um, angle, but um, maybe the main thing here is like the, the, the website layout was done as a result of attending um, a, a website course, a virtual website development course that Nigel Botter ran as part of the EC, all about you know headlines and then you know first and secondary calls to action and videos and you know headlines and, and things like that but essentially um because i only have a few minutes I'd, I'd rather probably talk about the photography element of it mm -hmm. um we do this at a local park called randley park it's literally five minutes away from our studio here mm -hmm. and uh it, it's best advertised on facebook or through the school's um parents contacts and email list that we've got um or through word of mouth um or you know through groups on facebook and stuff like that but essentially um we take the the, the families to the park um the difficulty with this one is that unlike studio you, you can't you can't really let them have an outfit change which is less important when they've chosen, you know, like the main outfit. Mm -hmm. um, and we have like an hour with them in the studio, in the park. And we normally with outdoor stuff shoot raw just because highlights and shadows are easier to correct. Um, sure. In a controlled kind of studio situation. And um, we take, I take around four to 500 images. Um, we do those, you know, there's a beautiful lake. Um, and you get the idea of the kind of images that we create and, and, yeah. and we, we use the park as like a set it is like working in a studio it's just you know some areas work better than others and i've got like a, a loop that i do when i take the families there now and um <clears throat> this was a, this was a really meaningful shoot actually this lady here called louise turner um this is her dad and he'd been diagnosed with lung cancer and he had about six weeks left when we took this, when we did oh, this shoot. Right. And she came to, she bought a big 40 by 25 up framed piece and she came to collect it. And she just literally got it to her dad a day before he passed. Uh -huh. So, you know, that's meaningful. It is meaningful. And that's why yeah. I'm in this business. Ultimately, you know, I've talked a lot about the money and the success and the scaling and all that stuff, but ultimately, I've got goosebumps on my own arm now because that's really, it's, <laughs> mm -hmm. what, I do, it's what I do this yep. for. It's what I do it for. And you mm -hmm. know, when I'm gone, hopefully, well, there will be thousands of people that have either got family portraits or a school photo yeah. on yeah. their, you know, in their home, uh, gracing their presence. And that's your legacy, isn't it? And I think that's one of the touching yeah. Yeah. honors to be in photography over, you know? Exactly. I've only had one of those where I did a family, or a portrait of a lady and a gentleman who won a free photo shoot with me we took to the park just like that and it was just her and her they hadn't had a photo since they were in their 20s with their kids and now yeah. they were in their 50s 60s and we did the shoot they did the viewing they picked their pictures and then she was supposed to she forgot her checkbook that day this is like 10 years ago and she was going to come by the saturday and before she came she called me and said i know i'm supposed to be there today but unfortunately her husband passed away the night before mm -hmm. and so these were the last pictures she ever had taken of the two of them yeah, so yeah, it yeah. does make their legacy like you said yeah no very much so it is it's, a, it's an honor to to, to have those yeah. with people um it is an amazing profession when you really get down to it the way yeah. we can uh i try not to tell too many people how much fun we're having and how much meaning there is <laughs> yeah. because yeah. then everybody would get in on it well i guess everybody has gotten in on it <laughs> <laughs> they have absolutely we so, want to we want to stay relevant though so so you get sorry, what, what's this story. where's this page from now so this is the how it works this is just an overview it's a, it's a little journey of, of what yeah. we do for the client so it's a design consultation it's prepare it's the experience um retouch now interestingly rob i know we've had this conversation before there's two ways you can approach this really we either pre-sell the ex that was the point really of doing this site was to pre-sell the experiences on the day so that people um, will pre-invest rather than trying to post sell the images. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you've got like a, I love that idea, you know, they, they, because they're bought into it and they know what they're getting. Yeah. Um, Star Trek experience one nine seven includes one print and 10% off additional purchases. Mm -hmm. Nice. And it goes up to, four, I think, 12.97 for the top package, which includes 
all sorts of things, including drone footage as well, like a family portrait shot with a drone, which looked brilliant. <laughs> um, so lots of creative stuff in there. Um, yeah. But, you know, if they don't pre-purchase, it's worked well before doing it on ShootProof, and we've had an average spend of 500 quid, and we can get, you know, eight sessions a day. So it's, you can do a £4,000 day if uh -huh. you know what you're doing. You're, so, kind of, you're kind of kind of doing a little bit of a volume approach, but high quality. Yeah, just filling Ish. filling the diary, filling the day, just literally filling a day. But it's the kind of concept where if this works, it could be quite a good franchise model, or you know, it could be scaled yeah. to four, five, eight, ten, fifteen, whatever towns around the UK. So uh, one thing I noticed about your marketing since day one, you have that the e myth approach. You built your business like it's a franchise. Uh -huh. system with systems in place yeah uh -huh. it, it's funny you know when when people see things from the outside but you know the, the reality that goes on I have approached my business like this but i don't yeah. feel that i've as yet got to a point where all the yeah. all the dots have joined up and all all the jigsaw pieces have sat together yeah. Maybe we never feel complete like that in business i don't know no. but you know i feel like i'm coming into like a a middle to end part of the book like mm -hmm. all of my knowledge all of my experience all of my passions and dreams are kind of coming together and it's now feels like it's more about teams and process and all of that stuff than yeah. actually any of the other stuff which i've kind of learned over the last 25 years so it just feels like a putting a jigsaw together now and it's kind of messy the journey but people don't really see that. They just see the end results if you're doing it properly, right? Yeah. I think everybody knows that, you know, there's no, there's no such thing as overnight success. Uh, or well, I, I, let me just reiterate what you're, you're trying to say and what I've observed is the effort is always there to try and implement those systems so that it has that uh, end goal, whether or not you actually get there. Who knows? I mean, it's nice to get there. But... Um, yeah, it seems to be working for you for the most part. I don't even know if you ever feel that you're there when you're there. It's like, you know, when you have a, well, when we had our first child and you're waiting for, for him to say his first words, but then when yeah. he says it, it's like, well, that's just the next step really. And then you think, <laughs> oh, he's going to walk now. And then he walks and then it's the next step. So I don't think, it's like you can't smell your own aftershave when you're airing it. I don't think you ever feel that you're there when you're there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you got away with words, Charles. I love it. <laughs> I hope that wasn't didn't sound like utter nonsense. If you know no, that was very poetic and metaphoric. I, I love the other terms you used before we let you go here. We're going to let you go in two minutes. And John, we could stay talking for a bit because I know Charles has got a uh, other yeah, commitments. No, no worries. Uh, you said uh, five minutes, Rob. It's fine. I can, I okay, can, cool. Uh, you said shiny object syndrome repeatedly, but I also like that other metaphor you use. You're chasing chickens all over the place. I mean, what a visual. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And what, I, what, you, what did you mean by that, just so people understand? Well, there's a saying. What I probably meant was he, he that chases two chickens catches none. Right. And for a long time in my career and business, all I wanted to do was just do lots of stuff. Mm -hmm. But it never leads to anything meaningful or significant. It just means that you're splitting yourself in half. Yeah. You're always diminishing one of the things that you're doing to yeah. the detriment of the other thing. So you're always not fulfilling anything. You're not doing anything properly. Mm -hmm. And I did that for a long time. You know, I, I probably gave the studio 70 to 80% of my full gusto uh, and the school's 20%. Whereas if you put 100% into something, Mm -hmm. There's a disproportionate effect, with dis disproportionate result or, or effect in the results that you get because all your focus is on that one thing. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, you know, chasing chickens or doing a million things, if I, if I was my older self telling myself to, you know, giving myself advice, I'd just say, just do one thing really well. And it's really hard to do. Yeah. That's yeah. a good way to look at it. And uh, I'm, I'm just also going to guess that there's no regrets. I mean, it's a journey you go on and you figure these things out as you figure out. You did studio portraits for many, many years, and it is now a thing that is not a thing. And uh, you're going in a whole new direction. You're adaptable <coughs> and willing to grow and learn new ideas and spend money on yourself via coaching. Yeah. So there's, a, there's an interesting... <laughs> Nigel, that's an interesting meme, whatever you could meme, whatever you call them. It's um, 
no regrets, but it's somebody that's had a tattoo put on their forearm and, it's, <laughs> and it says no regrets. <laughs> yeah, I've seen that one actually. It's a good one. Yeah. Uh, good one. I love one. it. So, <laughs> uh, closing questions. I was going to ask you, what would you tell your 25 year old self? But I think you kind of answered that just a minute ago. Mm -hmm. uh, what's your favorite movie? Oof. Good question. I don't great. think I've asked you that one before, but I like no. asking. Um, do you know what I'm going to say? I'm going to say The Revenant. Oh, oh really? Phenomenal cinematography. But yeah. Interestingly, just photographically, the film was off the scale. It was beautiful. Yeah. It's my most favorite recent film. All right. Yeah. I found it a little long, but I did yeah, it enjoy it. <laughs> it was long. You like the visuals. Oh, stunning. I love you... mountains and the snow and all that stuff. Okay. So I, just, yeah. I just found it. And they really struggled to shoot that movie. They had to go to the other end of the world because of global warming, so because there wasn't enough snow and mm. whatever. So no, I thought it was just brilliantly shot. I loved it. Um, my other favourite film is probably the um, oh gosh, what's he called? Uh, the Italian actor Sean Penn's in it. Why well, can't I remember it? Sean Penn. Sean Penn. How many years ago? Is it a classic? Oh yeah, it's about twenty years ago. Fast Times at Ridgemont High. <laughs> no, Sorry, I, had to... I can't remember my favorite film. Is it the one where he was a uh, special needs? Um, no. There was um, one where he was playing somebody that was kind of slower. Um, no. I'll think of it in a minute. The Talented Mr. Yeah. Ripley is another great film. That was brilliant. Yeah, that was a good one. Cool. Uh, there's loads of great films. Why can't I remember? Who's the Italian actor with the floppy head? Uh, Al Pacino. Al Pacino oh, um, and, okay. and Sean Penn. Come on. I don't know that one. You got me. I'm All right. curious. I'm going to have to Google it before we go because I can't. I can't not tell you. It. <laughs> well, I'm googling right now because I'm dying to know. Uh, Carlito's way. Oh, Carlito's oh, okay. way. Yeah, I never did see that one. I've Brilliant. seen it. That's a true story. I believe. So those are three of my favorite films. Good. I Thank find you. ever since I became a photographer, I do find I watch movies sometimes just to look at the lighting and the angles that they're doing, and that, and then you have to watch the movie again because you didn't you missed most yeah. of the movie. Especially a movie with a good story. Brilliant. I love that. You can either put, put, put your camera down or just watch the film. I think it's a good answer there. So yeah. I got to plug, plug a movie I watched last week. It just, just came out. It's called Nomad Land. Okay. It's called what? Nomad Land. Nomad Land. Okay. Nomad Land. She won Best Actress. She's a, She was the lead lady uh, cop in uh, Fargo. She's married to one of the Coen brothers. What's her name? McDormand amazing actress yeah. and half the people in that movie were not actors they were just real people and wow. half the scenes were shot in not actual movie settings they were in actual places where real people were so it's about people living a nomadic lifestyle in their vans or trailers or tents amazing um, fascinating like story very very deep francis mcdormand yeah it's her so if you, uh, you know, I like good. movies like that. They're existential and they just uh -huh. get me thinking. I got to watch them five, six times. So, Charles, we'll let you go now. Uh, I really appreciate you coming on board. And yeah. um, do you have any closing questions, John? For, for no, Mr. I think uh, no. I was just interested. I was just soaking it all in like a sponge. Everything he had to say because about the oh, marketing well. and stuff. So thank you. Well, it's always an honor to come on and speak to you, Rob. And nice to meet you, John, as well. Same and, here. And I th find you can never learn too much. I don't matter how many, how long we're in this game, we're never going to stop learning. So it's amazing. As as, I, I, yeah. I, what I will say is a, a parting gambit. And I knew you, Rob, when I was going through this. Was that when I got frustrated with my studio journey towards the end mm -hmm. of it, and I was kind of chasing money a bit as well, if I'm being honest. And I wanted something that was quicker and more residual and less repetitive. And I got into um, uh, basically a white label mobile app reselling agreement. Do you remember when I was doing that? Um, no, I don't. I started to sell mobile apps for like small business, like restaurants, cafes, bars. There was a kind of time with photography, but it was more of a... I just wanted to try something else. And that's what I mean about chasing two chickens. And uh -huh. you know, we did quite well in the first year. And then we did average in the second. And then it was uh -huh. just a lot of interest. By the time year three came around, I realized how passionate I was about photography. And all I wanted to do was get rid of that business and just reimmerse myself in what I was familiar and comfortable and good at. Mm -hmm. And um, and I, I just got rid of it. And, you know, I know now that the photography yeah. is, a, is, a, is a lifer for me. It's, fa it's funny you say that because – 
in, I look back, I'm 63 years old now, and I look back, I've been doing photography since I was in my early 20s. Many a time, I got seriously distracted and sort of down on it. So ah, I want to mm -hmm. do this, either just mentally, but not really so much where I actually moved away and sold everything and got into something else. But it doesn't matter. The idea is the same in that I got away from it, and I came back with a renewed <laughs> vigor. I, I've done that yep. a million times. John, I don't know if it's happened to you. Oh, yeah, it's happened to me many times where I just went to my wife and said, that's it, we're, we're doing something <laughs> different. But then she's like, think, uh, sleep on it. <laughs> yeah. So that's kind yeah. of what you're talking about, right, Charles? That's yeah, sort of the like, idea. T. Harv Eker, I don't know if you know him. Or yes. Stuff, but he, he sums it up. You know, if you get on the motor when you're in the slow lane, it's kind of like you just want to drive off. You're not in the right lane for where you're going. And it was kind of, it felt very much like that. I was just doing something yeah. for the wrong reasons. It's the only time yeah. I ever really not followed my heart and passion with something. And it just, it's not a long-term thing. That's amazing. Yeah. I like I like what you said, right lane. That's the opposite here in Canada. We, we drive from the right to the left lane when we want to get off track. <laughs> I meant right as in correct, not... Oh, okay, <laughs> I thought you meant right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Correction right, and, rather. right and wrong, not right and left. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I appreciate you being here. Um, we're going to let you go now. John, uh, okay. we're going to close off. I have to leave right away. So yeah, me, uh, no problem. My daughter's waiting outside. She's bringing me to pick up my motorcycle, which I just had the brakes nice. replaced on. So, nice. yeah. She's and I'm waiting. looking forward to getting Rob over here in about a month from now, I guess. Yeah. And I'm starting to promote tomorrow. Cool. We do we do Facebook ads, uh, Charles, uh, to promote our Fairy Day events, which okay. have been one of our biggest and most successful promotions. I noticed you're doing them too. I've done one for a while. Yeah, they're hugely, hugely uh, lucrative for us, and we've John asked us to come in his area. We did last year, and uh, much you, much to his wife's surprise, she didn't think it was going to fly, but it no. flew. <laughs> it actually went better than we expected, and uh, yeah. I think hopefully we'll do even better this time. Where, whereabouts are you based, John? I didn't ask. Before. I'm in Petawawa, Ontario, Canada here. So I'm oh. about uh, five hours north of Toronto and about maybe an hour and a half west of Ottawa. He's in the Ottawa Valley. That sounds yeah. so much better. Ottawa Valley. <laughs> We're right at one of the main military bases in Canada here in Petawawa. Okay, cool. So, Petterwall, Pembroke, and then Rob's about three hours from us, about yeah. northeast, I guess, from us. A little something bit, like yeah. that. Northwest. In the car, like not on a plane. In, in the, the car, car yeah. yeah. In the car, okay. Yeah, I'm about a five-hour drive from in the car from Toronto, where I'm from, yeah. basically. I'm basically from raised in Toronto. Nice. He's nice. a big city yeah. boy. I've never, I've never been to Canada. Maybe one day. No. Nope. Charles, nope. you got to make your way here. Let yeah. me know. Let me know. Oh, I'll treat you right, man. That would be lovely. And you got to visit Toronto, because Toronto is Canada, so... Maybe maybe we'll maybe we'll do a, a one day two day workshop on uh, marketing and, and uh, that'd be brilliant. I'd be yeah, so that'd be up, awesome. I'd be so up for that. And um, sponsored by No BS. The, the, yeah. yeah, there's a lot I could share. And uh, I have a friend in Toronto actually as well, a guy called Jonathan Pierce. He's in real estate there, so okay. I could even knock on his door and give him a shock. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Well, All I think right. you're due for a trip. So, okay. So, we'll talk soon. And uh, I'm heading out of here. So, I really appreciate you being here, Charles. And, uh, you know, your uh, your willingness to uh, be so generous with your time is appreciated by myself exactly. and John and everybody else in the community and in the photographic industry. I can't say thank you enough. So, my pleasure. I wish you all we'll the best. We'll definitely have to get you back on and again sometime soon. And maybe we'll actually get into some of the behind the scenes more about the business itself sure. and the shooting yeah. itself instead of the about the marketing. But the marketing was classic. I loved it. No, that great, great meeting you. That would be great. All the best, guys. And we'll speak soon. Same to you. Take care. Take care. I'm out of bye. here. Bye. Bye. All right.